Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Teresa Marantat, CEO and Chief Nursing Officer of the Windsor Essex County Health Unit. Thank you for your patience as we work to keep our website updated and provide you with daily updates. There are 17,897 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada and 4,726 cases are in Ontario. Chatham-Kent has 17 cases and Sarnia-Lambton has reported 86 cases. Michigan now has 18,970 cases with 5,476 cases in Detroit. We now have 244 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Windsor-Essex. 13 people have recovered. 25% of our cases are between the ages of 50 and 59 and 10% of our cases are over our 80 years of age or older. 41% are male, 58% are female, and 1% are unknown at this time. We are currently working with seven long-term care and retirement homes that are experiencing COVID-19 outbreaks. The health unit continues to follow up directly with everyone who has tested positive and negative for COVID-19. Those that are awaiting results are to remain in self-isolation. Overall, 1,823 individuals have been tested for COVID-19, and of those tested, 202 tests are pending. Testing for COVID-19 should be based on a clinical assessment. The following groups have been prioritized for testing. Symptomatic healthcare workers and staff who work in healthcare facilities, symptomatic residents and staff in long-term care facilities and retirement homes, hospitalized patients admitted with respiratory symptoms, symptomatic members of remote, isolated, rural and indigenous communities, symptomatic travelers identified at a point of entry to Canada, symptomatic community people with medical comorbidities such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and symptomatic community people who are working in an essential industry with the inability to isolate. If you believe you have symptoms of COVID-19 and have any risk factor, please get an assessment for testing. Also, please continue to visit wechu.org for the most current information and case counts. If you are feeling unwell and need to seek a health assessment for COVID-19, complete the online assessment uh, assessment tool at Ontario.ca, contact Telehealth Ontario, or call your primary care provider for a phone assessment or a virtual assessment. They will guide you in next steps, including contacting the health unit or visiting an assessment centre. I will now turn it over to Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health, for further updates regarding COVID-19. Good morning, everyone. It's been more than three weeks now since the Government of Ontario declared an emergency to protect the public. Since then, a number of measures are in place to protect the lives of every Ontarians. We're talking about physical distancing, self-isolation, self-monitoring for quite some time now. Many of you still wonder what is physical distancing. Physical distancing means keeping distance from one another and limiting activities outside the home. When outside your home, it means staying at least two meters or at least six feet away from everyone who do not live in your house. It can be challenging because we all like to socialize, hang out with friends, but it is important that we must continue to maintain physical distancing as we are dealing with this pandemic outbreak with everyone and maintain physical distance with everyone who do not live in your house. If you are an essential worker and are going to your workplace due to the nature of your job, you also need to physically distance even from your coworkers and everyone around you. You can still stay connected with friends and family through phone, instant messaging, or video chat. You can host virtual play dates or take your children on a virtual tour of a museum. Most importantly, when you're looking out for everyone, watch out for the seniors and vulnerable in your community. And try to connect with them virtually to ensure that we are not putting them at risk 
but we must maintain our physical distancing at all times. Self-isolation is different than physical distancing. Self-isolation is recommended by healthcare providers, including public health, to individuals who are at risk of developing COVID-19 or currently exhibiting signs and symptoms of COVID-19. Self-isolation helps to prevent the spread of the virus, especially if you become symptomatic with COVID-19. Everyone who is advised to self-isolate must stay home. Do not go outside for any reasons and avoid contact with others, and that includes everyone who lives in the same household too. It is important. People in self-isolation must avoid contact with others, including those in the same household. People in self-isolation must restrict themselves to one room of the house, if possible, and use a separate bathroom. If it is not possible for you to self-isolate yourself from your family due to room availability, you must keep a distance of at least two meters and wear a mask that covers your nose and mouth. In general, people must self-isolate if they have returned from tra travel outside of Canada, have been diagnosed with COVID-19, are waiting for test results for COVID-19, and it is important. If you have any symptoms with the suspicion of COVID-19, you must immediately self-isolate yourself to protect everyone else around you, whether you're waiting for the result of your testing or waiting to get tested or seen by a healthcare provider. You must continue to wash your hands often with soap and, soap and water. Now, some um, recommendations for the healthcare workers crossing the border for work. They must self-isolate themselves when they are not at work. It's a work-home self-isolation. So they're going to work, they're coming back in Canada, and they are self-isolating, even from their family members, just like everyone else who is advised to self-isolate. They should go to work and without any stop along the way. They're not supposed to stop for groceries or picking up anything. They're going back to their home. If they're living with their family, they should self-isolate them uh, from their family in, in their home. Thank you. We do get uh, complaints about that, but uh, some of those uh, details uh, uh, Teresa mentioned yesterday in terms of the enforcement pieces. So there are certain pieces that public health is following. There are certain pieces that 211 and 311 are following up. Uh, and uh, we recognize that uh, you know people can still go outside, but what they need to do is to ensure that they're physically distancing. People who are asked to self-isolate, they should not go outside at all irrespective of whether they are physically distancing or not. They should not go outside for any reason unless it's an emergency. And even if they are doing, they need to notify the health unit, they need to notify the first responders. If they're, if they're getting in touch with the first responders, they have to do that. For everyone else, if they're, when they're outside, um, maintaining physical distancing is critical. If, they are, if you are walking or biking or riding uh, with the family members that you live in the same household, that is okay, but any any friend or any relative who is, doesn't live in your household, try to uh, maintain that physical distance at all time. So, have you gotten a, like a crazy amount of calls yet, or is it sort of you know we don't know yet? Okay. Yeah, we we okay, don't I have that number, but yeah, we do lot, right? we so we do get uh, some of those calls. I cannot say that uh, how many, but uh, we do get those. The reason I ask is, is you know in the UK the uh, health minister put out a warning to residents saying, listen, if you flout this, then, you know, I'm, at some point I'm going to have to, like, shut it down and, and, like, really isolate everybody. So be good about the social distancing, like you said. So, um, you know, yeah. I just want to know where we're at. Now. Yeah, no, it is important, and I think it. Uh, we must need. Uh, we must recognize that uh, what we are dealing with right now, it's it's something major. It is all about our freedom, too. 
we have we live in a country where we have all these freedom and and luxury to to do things the way we want but there also has to be some kind of a balance we don't want to be in that position where we are forced to take measures which is to 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 put those restrictions in place i think that's why the the message is we need to respect that freedom that we have uh, and we shouldn't go to a place where those freedoms could be at stake any questions from blackbird I noticed that the number of tested tests is kind of uh, rising again. Is that just because more people are being tested, or is there a backlog? Um, all I can say is the number, the testing capacity of the lab is increased, and uh, there are more people currently being tested. And even when the lab results are going to the lab, it's a centralized lab with uh, that are getting res uh, uh, requests from everyone in the West Region, Ontario West Region. Um, so there, ha there has to be some kind of a prioritization which they do for people who are in the hospitals or in ICU. They are prioritized to get their results back quickly. So I can't say for sure, uh, but uh, 200 pending, it seems a good amount compared to what we were. The lab capacity is pretty much uh, along the same lines for every day for our region. So I'm not worried that these are all pending. I, I think we should be able to get the results back in 24 to 48 hours uh, uh, for all those individuals. So the the piece that I mentioned, it's specifically for the healthcare workers who are crossing the border every day. Uh, healthcare workers who are here, I think they 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 are um, uh, they recognize the risk and they are taking all those precautions in place. My recommendation is more for the people who are crossing the border because the number of cases across the border is uh, much higher than what we have here in Windsor. Lisa mentioned that uh, 13 cases are considered resolved. Do you expect that number to increase at a more rapid rate? Uh, absolutely. There are a number of people who are in, in that category, and uh, it all depends on their symptoms and uh, how they are uh, doing with the testing. Some individuals are being tested to, to get a negative, uh, and some individuals are waiting for their symptom resolution. So we will, we will, we, we will see those numbers increasing. Um, over the last six days, the number of new cases reported locally has been between 13 and 24. It seems that we're not seeing that exponential growth that a lot of other places in the world have seen. Did you say that's because our measures are starting to work, or is it uh, too, too early to say that, that we're having an effect here? I would be cautious about uh, saying too much about those numbers. Those uh, numbers, I think we should uh, uh, keep an optimistic uh, caution on those numbers and uh, we should be in a better position to, to say with more certainty next week when we are getting those uh, data analyzed. Um, but you're right, in terms of the exponential increase, uh, our numbers are increasing, but not at an exponential rate, but we are just watching it very carefully. But having said that, I think it is, so yeah, so, but I, I would still recommend that it's not the time that people will start to see that we have done everything that we need to and we don't need to do that. We must continue these measures for a longer period of time to see the results. The chain of transmission hasn't broken yet. We are still getting the cases. People are still getting infected. People are still getting sick. People are still dying. So make sure that we continue to do that these measures, it take long time to show an impact. So I don't want to undermine any bit of it that whatever we are seeing right now, it is, it, it takes a long time to get to this stage and it will take us longer to be in a position where we can all be uh, happy about uh, the number of cases and what we are seeing in our community. Uh, yeah, just a couple. Uh, are we still at six fatalities from this? Uh, we will update all those numbers on our website uh, as we are getting the data uh, every day, and uh, we um, we will we will report it. This morning, I was just looking at the 
morning on AMA Hundred, you mentioned something about how the community, in terms of self isolation, you were it as being okay. Um, can you expand on that in terms of how would you grade the community in terms of dealing with these measures? I look at London, and London has fewer cases than Windsor does. Again, we're a border city, but overall, how would you rate the community in terms of self isolating and dealing with this? So as, as I said, I think people, uh, um, again, sometimes I like to be more um, uh, optimistic. People are getting into that mindset. There are still people who are not following many of these rules. Um, but as some of these measures have been put in place for, for, for a bit, little bit longer, it is giving that education to the community that what does it mean for about physical distancing. And that's why I reiterated some of the same messaging again to make sure that people understand it. Because some people may think that, yeah, I'm maintaining my physical distance, but not maintaining physical distance with people that they know. Or when they're out and, and they're working, maybe they don't realize that, yeah, I still need to do my physical distancing piece. So I think it takes time for the community to learn some of those measures. I like to say that uh, we are uh, getting better, uh, but uh, we are also getting complaints as well. Hopefully, as a community, we all act together and uh, we get to a position where we are following all those recommendations and seeing a decline in the number of new cases in our community and overall keeping our community safe. So I, I, I'm hoping that uh, that is being followed right now. Easter's this weekend and people visit family. That's a good question, and I think my recommendation would still be the same, that uh, you know, it is important to stay connected, but people are now finding new ways, more creative ways. There are a number of uh, virtual options available. I would strongly encourage people to use those virtual options rather than gathering in, in one place, even with your closest family members. If the, you do not live in the same house, please stay in your, in your own house. And for any reason, if you cannot m stay, still maintain the two meters distance as recommended, but there's always a risk. I would strongly urge that people should stay in their home and stay with their family that they live with. Any questions from CDC? Yes, on your website it says there are now seven deaths. Do you have any information as to the age range, whether they were in hospital or long-term care facility? So the uh, the seventh one is a, is a person is a female in her nineties and uh, from uh, one of the long term care home facility. Thank you. So just to confirm, there is another death. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 Yeah.